Hi, my name is Reem Kassis and I'm the author of The Palestinian Table. Today we're going to be make making frike topped with uh, braised small cubes of beef. So the first step that we're going to do actually is to uh, saute the onions in some butter and some olive oil. Once we have done that, we will also add some spices so that they can get infused in the oil. And then we will also saute the frike with the onions and this step really helps the flavors of the frike to come out. Frike is a very typical Palestinian, also Egyptian grain. It's made from wheat that's been cracked and then eventually burned and that's what gives it the very distinct flavor. So right now we're just sauteing the onions until they get to a light brown color. Okay, so now the onions have started to take on some color and their smell is really starting to intensify. So I'm going to add some, about a teaspoon of this mixed nine spice mix to them. So that it also infuses in the olive oil. And once we've done that, I'm going to add the frike to it. And you're ready, the frike, you're just tossing it around to ensure that you're coating all the grains. And once I've done that, I'm going to add the chicken broth to it, and then we will leave it to cook slowly. It will take about 30 to 45 minutes. It will still have a bite to it, but that's how you want the frike to be. See how it becomes shiny. Okay, at this point, I'm going to add the chicken broth. Now this is when we will add some salt and a bit more spices and depending on how salty your broth is you may need to add a little bit less or a little bit more salt. I'm going to start out with a very small teaspoon. We're going to cover it now, wait for it to come to a boil and then we will lower the heat and let it simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes until the frite is cooked through. In the meantime, we'll start on preparing the meat that will top the frike. Okay. So I'm also going to saute the meat in some butter and olive oil. We're just gonna wait for it to get really hot and then we'll add the cubes of beef, which have been chopped quite small. Okay, so now that the butter and oil have heated up, we can add the meat. I'm going to add some spices and then we can taste and adjust later on. So once the meat has been seared, we'll cover it and let it braise in its own juices until the frika is done, then we'll brown it and top it with it when we serve it. Okay, at this point, I think we can cover the meat and just let it cook down on low heat. I'm just going to stir it in. It's about to start boiling and then I will lower the heat and let it cook slowly. So we're going to start on the tomato, sumac and garlic salad. This is a very typical one that we make at home. We normally use um, baladi tomatoes, which are basically organic tomatoes in season, so they're very fleshy, not a lot of juice. Uh, in absence of that, uh, I'm using cherry tomatoes. Um, once we've chopped the tomatoes, we can start to arrange them in the platter that you're going to serve it in. The dressing is drizzled over it. I like to just alternate the colors. It's beautiful, it's colorful, and then it'll get even more bursts of color with the green chilies and the sumac. So now I'm going to chop the green chilies. You can do it any way that you want. You can do it in very small dice. You can do it in rounds. It's really a matter of preference. Now I'm just going to top the tomatoes with the green chilies. And now for the dressing, 
Uh, we're going to mix some garlic with lemon juice and olive oil. So I have about one large clove of garlic here. salad will also get a sour flavor from the sumac, so the lemon really just gives it the dressing, but the sour flavor is coming from both. The dressing will go on at the very end, right before you serve, just so that the vegetables stay crisp. I think that should be good. Now we'll add a bit of salt. You always want your dressing to taste a bit more salty and a bit more sour than what you think is good because it really helps to bring out the flavor of the vegetables and once you put it on with them it mellows out. I'm going to add some olive oil now and mix it. We generally tend to do uh, about equal amounts of olive oil and lemon juice. I mean, traditional vinaigrettes have a lot more olive oil than lemon, but for our salads, we tend to use roughly equal proportions of both. And this is, with the exception of the garlic, lemon and olive oil is generally what we dress all of our salads with. So now that the dressing is ready, we'll just wait until we're going to serve it. In the meantime, I'm going to rip up some mint leaves, just very roughly torn. So for the mint, you can just use some very small leaves, some very roughly torn leaves. It's a very rustic salad, so any way that you do it, it will look and taste wonderful. You can play around with this. I mean, this is how we make it at home, but if you don't have fresh mint and you want to choose fresh oregano, or if you want to choose even fresh coriander or parsley, it's, yes, the flavor profile will be different, but it's still the fresh herbs, tomatoes, garlic, lemon, olive oil, you can't go wrong. Taste the frika now to test for the bite. And salt. It needs a bit more salt. If at any point throughout the cooking you see that the broth has started to dry out, but the grains are still not fully cooked, you can always add just a little bit of water to them. And frika really absorbs a lot of water, so. It's not like rice where it might get very mushy if you add more, so you'll be perfectly fine even if you do. So really we're done right now. Uh, it's just a matter of waiting for the frika to cook through, for the meat to completely braise, and it's a very simple meal. This is sumac, which is essentially actually just the rind of the sumac berries. It's very sour. We prepare this at home, so my parents purchase the berries, they dry them, they grind them, and then they put them through a sieve to get rid of the internal seed and just keep the skin of the berry. It gives foods a very sour flavor and we're going to top the salad with it once we've dressed it. So it's been about 40 minutes since the frika started to simmer. Uh, we're going to turn it off now and let it rest for about five to 10 minutes before serving it. I normally just like to put, you can use paper towels or a regular kitchen towel to absorb all the steam as you wait for it to just absorb the remaining liquid and then you can turn off the heat and just let it sit for 10 minutes and then you'll be ready to serve. Now that the frika is done, we're going to finish off the meat. We're just going to amp up the heat so that the water evaporates and then the meat can actually braise. So the water is evaporated now, you can hear the sizzling, the meat is starting to slowly brown. So now we're done. We're just going to serve the frike, layer it in the platter, top it with the meat and the nuts, dress the salad, and you can eat. So you see, even though we put a lot of water on the frike, it's absorbed it all and it's still quite fluffy. It doesn't become like rice. I'm just going to top it all with the meat is what I do just because it's very pretty in terms of presentation but also very easy but you can have your choice I mean there have been times where I have just roasted some lamb chops and put them around the platter you can also grill chicken in the oven whatever protein you would like you can serve with it and then the final step is just the pine nuts and we 
also do some dry almonds on top. And now we're going to just add the dressing and just some that to the salad. have to try it make sure it's good you can have a small taste I love mixing it with the salad as well hi snowball oh hi Lois yalla huh snowball okay bokrush al akhil bas bokrush loz al snowball zaki khalif 